Hi and welcome to another video by me, Joe Onwin, also known as Flow Joe. Today we are looking at a Power Automate desktop video and how do we extract data from lists? Now, more often than not, you'll go onto a web page and you're trying to extract data from and you'll find there's some information. Now, they're not using tables. What they're using is a list. And for those of you that aren't familiar with how a list is built, you can have a unordered list and then just have list items. Now, there's no specific thing that's identifying these. You've not got any identification on this. And as you can see here by the structure of this, we've just got article, then we've got an unordered list, then we've got a list item and another list item and another list item and they just contain text. So how do we then get the information that we want out of this? Let's say I want T, the second one. How do I get that? Well, what you can do is you can actually capture the whole information from the list and then just take the information out because what's going to happen is it's going to be captured and stored in a table in Power Automate Desktop. So how do we go about doing this? Well, firstly, let's go through um, what we've actually got. So we've got a demo page that I've created. It's just got a list example, coffee, tea and milk. Um, and what we've got in Power Automate Desktop right now is we've got a launch a new browser. It's storing a browser instance. Then it's using this extract data from web page action. And this is what we're going to be focusing on today and how we actually use this action because it's quite complicated if you've never used it before. You may have read some of the documentation. It says you need to capture some stuff, but how do you go about doing that? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that today and then we are simply closing the browser. So what I'll do then is I'm just going to run this as an example. So let's just close this browser instance and we'll have a look. So let's get started then. We're running it. We are currently launching the um, Edge instance. So, bam, Edge instance is now launched. We are on the page, great. We've got all of that information stored in the browser so we know exactly where we are in the browser. Next, we are going to extract data from web page um, into a data from web page variable. So we're going to capture all of this list information even though we don't have any unique identifiers um, to specifically target one, we're going to target all of them. So we're going to capture all of that data. So if I press next, what's going to happen then is we are going to populate this data from web page variable. So as you can see over here, I've got three rows now. So if I open up this, you can see I've got coffee, tea and milk. Great. So I've got all of that information and then I'm simply closing the browser. So now I have all of that information and I've stored uh, that in my um, list, uh, from my list to my table. How do I actually get the data out? So let's go into um, creating a variable. So let's go set variable. And what we'll do is then we'll just select the data from web page. Now it starts at a base of zero. So for instance, if we have, um, three items, it will go zero, one, two. So if we want the second item, it's actually the first item. So we would put square brackets and one, and we'll just put um, var output, just as an example. So if I run this again now, we should get T stored in var output, because as you can see here, it starts at zero, zero, one, two, three. So what we're trying to then achieve is we are trying to achieve getting T from this list um, that we have now stored in a table. Again, I haven't shown you how to do this yet, but I'm going to show you this momentarily, but it's important to understand how you can extract the data. So if I run this again, okay, so we launched the browse, browser instance. Let's just minimize that. We capture the data from the list. So now we've got all of that information stored in the list. Then we're going to take from our table one of those items that we need and store it in var output. So if we come into here, we've now got T. So as you can see here, we've actually got 
T stored in here. So we can actually use that now um, as a specific item and then we can close the browser. So we have taken from an entire table one particular item and we've got that one item now stored in a variable so that we can then use that throughout our bot. Great, so we don't have specific targeting items on the site, it's just a, an unordered list. We know that the second item that we want um, is T, so we know that we're always going to want to pull the second item, but it's in a um, base of zero, so the second item is actually one. We use the square brackets, target one from the data from web page, and we're able to then pick up T. So how does this work? Well, firstly, I'm going to just run this again to get our uh, browser instance open. Okay, so let's stop it here. Let's go and actually delete this particular one and see how we achieve this. So obviously, um, data from web page doesn't exist at the moment. But what you want to do is you want to go on the left hand side, go to browser automation and where it says um, extract data from, uh, let me just pull it up so you can see it, extract data from web page. You target the browser instance, so we've got browser, so our browser instance is browser. If you've got multiple browser instances, you'll have to target the specific one. And then you're storing the data into a variable. You don't want to store it into an Excel sheet, obviously you can but you're storing it in a variable because you're using it in your um, bot at the moment. And then we've got variables produced of data from web page. Now, what you would normally do here is you would select a, um, a particular UI element, such as the entire list and all of that type of stuff. Uh, but that's not how this particular action works. If you look here, it says um, you need to actually open the browser with this dialog open for the item to pop up so that you can actually uh, go in and extract that data. So if I come into here, what's going to happen then is I'm going to get a pop-up. So this pop-up uh, shows up and it then allows you to extract data from the site. So if you hover over any of the items that it tells you it's a list item, great. But if you like click on it, it doesn't do anything. If you control click on it, it doesn't do anything. So it's not capturing it as your traditional um, UI element capture. What you actually need to do is you need to select the first item from the list, right click, extract element value, and then select text. Um, so what that's going to do, oops, must have misclicked, is add it to the extraction preview. Now that's just capturing one, right? But it's not capturing the entire list. So what you need to do is you need to do exactly the same for the second one. And then once you've done the second one, it's going to realize that it's a list that you're capturing. So then it will capture every single one after that. And as you can see here, it's got the third one captured. And then when you hit finish at this particular point, it's then going to take you back and it's going to understand that it's going to capture all of that information from that list, store it now in our variable. So if I hit save, and now it's capturing everything. So even though I only selected the first two, um, it's actually capturing everything. And the most important part about it is that when you right click, you capture the first one and you select text, and then you do the second one, select text. And as you can see here, it's still highlighted in green, um, but it's capturing the remainder of the list. And that is how you can capture all of the entire list without going through each individual one. It will do it all for you. And then in Power to Make Desktop then, what you do is you simply run this, it will capture it in data from web page. So let's just close this instance and run this again, just to verify that it's working. And we launch our browser. Then we go to next. So we're storing that information in the um, variable. And as you can see here, we've got all of the entire list, even though we only selected the first two, it knew to capture every other thing in the list. So if we click OK and then press next, we are then capturing T again as a single item and then we are closing the browser. So that is how easy it is to capture 
information from a, a browser for a list, even if the list doesn't have specific um, items like an ID or a class or anything like that, and they are just list items. So there could be hundreds of them. You don't have to go through each one of them. You just have to select the first one, right click, um, extract information, then select text, exactly the same for the second one. It will understand it's a list. It will go through the entire thing for you, store it. You'll store it in a table in PowerPoint Desktop, and then you can extract the information however you wish. I just took the second, uh, the second one um, and stored it in a variable. But remember, the data is of base zero, so you have to go zero, one, two, three. So if it is the second one, remember it is technically the first, and if it is the third one, it is the second one, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then you can simply just grab that information rather than having to try and work out the correct X path for the specific list item. You can simply store it all in a table and extract that information however you wish. I hope that helps. Thank you. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, hit that like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. And I'll see you next time on another video.